Uh, let's get started. Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, uh, Guide to Magnolia CMS Workflows. Uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Ben Price, uh, Marketing Manager here at Magnolia. I'm just going to give you a really quick overview of what we'll be covering in this webinar and a few housekeeping items. Uh, everybody is muted, but uh, that doesn't mean you can't ask questions. Feel free to submit them throughout the webinar using the GoToWebinar control panel that you see there, and we'll do our best to answer all the questions at the end of this webinar. Uh, a few days after the webinar, we'll be posting a recording um, and emailing everybody with links to the slides and other useful resources as well. You'll also be able to contact either of us directly. Uh, those contact details will also be in the email. Uh, today's webinar will last around 60 minutes and I'm going to hand over very shortly to Magnolia's senior software engineer, Espen Yovaldo. And, um, and he's going to demonstrate uh, how to create custom tasks and workflows in Magnolia 5. So without further ado, over to Espen. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to this webinar on tasks and workflow. My name is Espen Vidalo. Uh, I'm in the product team of uh, Magnolia here in Basel. Um, during the last year I've been involved and mostly responsible for uh, Magnolia's new workflow module, a short agenda. So I'll do a short introduction, um, show you the publication workflow, then I'm going to talk a bit about tasks uh, and last but not least I'll get to the workflow, process modeling for example and so on. So let's go a bit back in history. Uh, some of you might have seen this view before. This is the work item inbox from Magnolia 4.5 and earlier. Uh, it was used to not very use about pending publication requests. Um, underneath uh, we were using OpenWFE as an engine. Uh, this is XML file based and you had no visual modeling. Uh, the project was discontinued, so when we moved to Magnolia 5, we had to get an alternative and we decided for JBPM. We introduced a new workflow based on JBPM together with uh, Magnolia 5 in August last year. It was rather a uh, rudimentary integration and from 5.0 to 5.2 of the workflow, we only did incremental fixes. This changed when we introduced uh, Workflow 5.3, which was bundled with the minor fix version of Magnolia 5.2. Um, so you see here we have a discrepancy between versions since then. First of all, uh, we moved from JBPM 5.3 to JBPM 6, which is uh, still today the latest version released. We also revamped the whole persistency layer based on JCR and put a lot of effort into simplifying the configuration needed for using the workflow. Uh, still we had one big usability problem. Um, we were using our messages in Pulse to notify users about pending publication requests. Uh, these messages are very much like emails, so if a message is sent to a group, for example the publishers group in this example, uh, you end up sending one message to each member of that group and uh, this led to several problems. So, for example, one of the users in the group never knew what the actual status of the publication request is, so uh, whether a user already had taken care of it or not. And the worst thing, um, if somebody managed to actually delete that message, uh, you could end up with uh, the whole workflow just being stuck at that state. <clears throat> so this problem was the main focus when we started work on the next major version of workflow and we solved it by introducing tasks. <clears throat> you see it here in the background, this is the new view. Um, besides the messages uh, which are grayed out here, you have a completely new view called tasks. Um, and uh, I would, for now, I would really just like to show you the publication, uh, the publication workflow. Uh, I guess some of you guys already know it, but for those who haven't seen it, 
Uh, I'll just do a short summary. So the publication workflow is mostly used in the Pages app. So I'll go in here. Uh, here you have your page tree. Um, I'll open the About page. And we will now do a little change here in the uh, page header. Just to, just to show you how it looks like. So uh, you usually will want to go and preview your change and see if everything is as you want it to be. And from here on you can directly uh, start a publication request <clears throat> here on the right side. So um, you can get ready for the submission of your publication. So you uh, have the possibility to add a comment. So I changed the header of the About page. Uh, and then you are able to add a publication date. So you can specify on which date and what time on the day you want to actually do the publication from author to public. Now I start the process. And as I am logged in as super user here, uh, which is also part of this publisher group, I also get notified about this publication request. Now the new thing here is, as already mentioned, you have the messages are still there, but you have this task overview here. Um, you can sort them by what kind of status your tasks are in. This one is new, which also means it's unassigned, which is here. I can go in and double click on this to get a bit more information about the task. So see here the path to the actual page. Uh, you have the comment I entered and so on. Now you could go and preview this page or you could even uh, show a diff view of what has changed between the versions. Now I'm just going ahead and assigning this task to me. And if I go back, you see it has disappeared from the new status. Uh, this is also the case for every other publisher. They won't see this task here anymore. It is now reserved for me and for me only. So now we can take this away from me. Um, I go back into the detail view and I'm now just going to publish it. So at this moment the changes went from the author to the public. And that's all there is to it for now. I'll go back into my slides. <clears throat> so to sum up what we saw right now, this is Magnolia's publication workflow. Uh, it uses the JBPM engine to execute a process or in fact several processes tied together using so-called uh, collectivity. Uh, we have custom work item handlers involved and uh, human interaction is managed by JBPM's human tasks. In case you didn't understand all of this, never mind. You can actually just forget all about the last slide for now. Um, you didn't really see anything related to JBPM or workflows in this uh, short demo. What you just saw is Magnolia's new task module and its uh, integration into the Pulse. We will get back to workflow later on, but first I would like to take a little detour and a closer look at our new tasks module. Uh, one reason for this is that most people see tasks and workflow as one unit, and I would like to change that view. Um, the task module is in itself completely self-contained and a separate and separated from anything related to workflow. On the other hand, its integration with the workflow fills the gap when dealing with human interactions inside your workflow. Um, to make that a bit more clear, so the workflow module is as bundled, uh, it's an enterprise edition feature, so it's bundled with the enterprise bundle. And uh, the tasks module is coming together with this community edition. And it's a very nice addition to what Magnolia already has to offer. So I'm going to prepare a little uh, showcase for this, uh, which um, shows the strength and the ease of use of tasks and uh, 
just to make this clear, uh, there is no workflow involved whatsoever in this short little sample. And the problem with samples is you also have to find something that more or less makes sense. Uh, so what I come up with here is uh, assuming you have multiple editors working on your instance, uh, they are all allowed to upload images. So let's say you end up browsing through the images you have on your system and at some point you realize, okay, uh, there might be some licensing issues with this image. Uh, so you can have added this little action here on the right. Um, if I click on it, there's no uh, immediate, um, uh, well, what it does essentially is it creates a new task inside of Pulse. So let's assume you sent this to some guy in your office who uh, would then go and check the licensing. Um, Obviously, for the showcase, I'm just sending it to myself, so I don't have to log in and log out again. Um, it's displayed under the same um, view as, for example, publication requests. So this is really for all tasks that you add into your system. I can go in and look at it, see the detail view. So here I have uh, the path to the asset, which I want to have checked. I added a comment to it and from here on I can go and do exactly the same as with the publication. I sign it to myself. Uh, it's reserved for a super user in this case. And from here on I can approve it uh, given that I actually checked the license. Okay, so this was really just a sample. Um, just to show that you can use tasks without the workflow and to um, really make sure that you understand how this works, I have uh, created an own module for this little use case called task sample. Um, this is created with uh, Magnolia's um, archetype, Maven archetype. Uh, it's plain simple Maven module. Um, we have three classes in here. Um, those two here are, those empty ones are auto-generated. So this one I actually created. So essentially you have one class for this use case. Um, what I do inside here, uh, that's the action I add to the asset app. This is the implementation of that action. And what I do here is I create this task pojo. I give a name to it, I call it copyright check. Please keep this uh, name on your mind. You will see that later on. It's the most important part of this. I can set uh, the requester, so that's the currently logged in user at the moment when you click on that action, so that's me essentially. Then I can set the recipients or possible assignees to this task. In this case, I just sent it to myself. This could also be a group or whatever. Um, this is also important. So usually when you create a task, um, you want to give some sort of content with it. And the content, uh, for example, can be used to display data in the pulse so what I do here, um, this is a map where you can put any data into it as you want. Here I put the actual node path of the asset. So here I go and resolve that. And I just put that into the content map of the task. And I add a hard-coded comment to it. And last but not least, I use the task manager, which I have injected here into my action and add it. <clears throat> and that's all code I needed for this example. Now I would like to go back into Magnolia and show you the configuration of this use case. So I go into my uh, task sample module right here. And you see I have two nodes underneath here. Um, some of you might notice this one, the message view node. I'll get back to that. Uh, let's look what's inside here. 
So this is uh, the task definition registry. So every time you want to have some sort of new task type, you would start by configuring, configuring it inside of your um, tasks node in your module. And all I needed for this example here was I created a view mapping. So here I define the view of the task type, copyright check, and I um, so here this is a bit of a problem. It's not a problem, but it's just something that's a bit annoying. Uh, we call this task view here, but essentially it's a message view. So we use the same um, mechanism we do for the actual messages inside of Pulse. So a message has a message view. As I said, some people might know this, and the task also uses the same mechanism for displaying what you want to see. So if I go inside here and have a look at what I configure here, I have this form and I have three fields, one requester, one path, and you see here how I reference um, parameters inside of that content map. I can use a dot notation for this and I have the comment which is directly a field on the task. Furthermore, I'm having, I have three actions configured here and if I now go back into my uh, resolve task, you see here I have the requester, I have the path inside the content map, and I have the comment, plus I have three actions to the right, which you can configure with action availability. So you see the, um, the gray out, uh, depending on which kind of status you're in. So this one is resolved. All you can do from here on is just remove it from the list. Okay, <clears throat> and I think that's all I wanted to show here. So again, I created two configuration nodes underneath my module. I added one action class and I'm able to use uh, the tasks inside Pulse without anything else. So just a short summary, um, here you see how I create a task, um, just instantiate uh, the task pojo, I set the name on it which maps to your task definition inside of your module, I put some content on it, I set uh, possible actors or as possible assignees of that task and I add it using the task manager. So the task manager is usually injected into your class um, and the task manager makes sure that uh, the task is always updated when you move from one state to another but furthermore it also notifies the whole system about changes to each and every task and uh, what it does is it notifies over the Magnolia system event bus so I'll show you one example of what you can do with this mechanism and that's uh, often, um, well, we often get requests about um, people who want to send notifications per email when um, something ha happens to a publication. So the simplest approach which does not only notify on publication tasks but could be used to generally send emails um, when a task is, for example, resolved or its execution failed is by registering a task event handler um, to the event handler uh, to the event bus. So you see here I implement a task event handler called task email service um, inject event bus, the system event bus, and uh, I implement here I'm only implement the task resolved method from the interface. So you would put all the email sending code inside here and the result of this is that every time a user resolves a task you're able to send an email to somebody who might be interested in this. And of course this is not only for when you resolve it, uh, you, um, this is also when you create a task, this is when a task somehow fails and when it's removed and whatever you want 
to do that. <clears throat> okay, so the message I want you to take with you is um, don't think about workflow first when you get through requests concerning somehow related to publication. Uh, think task. The reason for this uh, is most of the requests that pop up around workflow are really not workflow related. They're just uh, <clears throat> feature requests which can be solved without process modeling and having a JBPM engine underneath. And even if the scope of the feature changes after the first implementation, um, and the usage of workflow suddenly starts to make sense. Most of what you do with your task and what you have implemented, uh, you can later on reuse uh, with a workflow working underneath this. And I will get back to this later on. And uh, let's get back to workflow. Um, and the question which always pops up is, can I do this and that with workflow? And uh, this is a bit like asking, can I do this and that with Java? Um, the answer is more or less always, yes, you can. Um, you can, I'm pretty sure you can do everything with, with a workflow. And uh, you probably have about a million ways to solve it using workflow. So as an example of what can be achieved with a workflow process, you see here a web shop example. Uh, this is not coming from Magnolia. I just googled for complex BPMN2 process and found this picture. Um, so I won't go into details here, but you see the process is started at the left top corner. When I use places on order in a web shop, furthermore you see seven of these light blue rectangles called activities. So, for example, the make order, you have validate order, check customer data, check order, and so on. Um, you also see that two of them have this human icon at the left top corner, so that's make order and validate order. So, as a consequence, you can assume that only twice in this process there will be some sort of user interaction and it's only the customer who needs to do something. And think of the other five activities as automated services or, simply put, just Java classes. So this is what I want to express here. You end up having five Java classes. So that's the check customer data, check order, check stocks, and so on. Uh, which take care of very specific tasks and all the code and logic you would need to put the execution of those classes together is gone. Plus you have a visual representation of that logic, so more or less everybody should be able to understand what's happening here. And this is really what it's all about. Um, you model the execution flow <clears throat> and you end up having five Java classes and compared to how this would look if you would code all this. Um, in the end, I think it, at least it should be easier to maintain and understand at least. Okay, so let's move from this um, r rather complex process example to uh, the process basics. And for that I'm going into Eclipse. Um, here we are. I have uh, created this My Workflow project, also using Maven Architects from Magnolia. But the first part of this uh, has nothing to do with Magnolia. It's just about uh, the BPMN2 modeler plugin for Eclipse. Uh, sadly, there is none for IntelliJ, so that's why I'm here in Eclipse now. Um, so BPMN2 is a standard, which means there are, in theory, there are uh, multiple implementations for this modeling that you could choose from. Um, in practice, I'm really not aware of many of them. Uh, here at McMorrow, we use this plugin. Um, if you know of something better, um, I would be glad to hear about that. 
anyway, um, I'm just going to start off by uh, creating a new process. So I'm here inside my, my module, inside the resources folder. I hit Command N to create a new, fi new file and I pick the BPN2 process. Click Next. I call it Webinar Process and I'm finished. So this is my new process. It has a start event on it. Um, okay, so you see here something is missing. The start event has no outgoing connections and I'm going to do the simplest fix to this. I'm going here into my palette. I will be searching for an end event. I just drag it into here and I will connect those two. Now I'm uh, saving this and the error is gone. So this is the simplest process you can create. The moment you launch this process it goes in goes into the start event and it will immediately just terminate the process. Um, if you click on the sheet here, you have these properties down here where you can go through. So this is called sample process. You can go and change this name. Um, this name is really not important. I think it's just for display purposes. Uh, more interesting stuff happens here. So your process has an ID. Um, this ID is used uh, JBPM internally. Um, you will see this ID later on. Otherwise, uh, I'll just leave it for now. Now, as I said, this is really the simplest process you can create. It doesn't do anything. Uh, it doesn't process anything and that's probably not what you want. So, that's the moment when you start looking at your possibilities here. And if you just click through those, uh, you realize it's pretty massive what you can do. So this is where those million ways to solve your problem comes in. Um, the, uh, in my opinion, the important stuff is in here. So it's called activities or tasks or work item is a technical term, which I will use from here on. So I'm not going to explain all of this simply also because I can't. I don't know everything about this stuff either. So I'm just going to pick out a few ones. So you have, for example, a call activity which you can pop in here. Um, if you now put the arrows correctly, you could go from start to a call activity to the end. And what this activity does is it allows you to um, launch another process. So if you have multiple processes like I have here, you could go and just launch another process based on that ID I showed you before. I'm not going to do that, so I'll just delete this one. Um, we have user tasks. Uh, this is, I'll get back to this one later on. You have, for example, a script task. So if you pop that in here, uh, you are able to actually script Java inside of your process. No, I'm going to shortly show you what this actually is. I mean, underneath this process is just XML. So if you put such uh, a script task in here, you end up having Java code inside of XML, which is not really nice in my opinion at least. So I'll show you an example of how you can do something similar in a pretty neat way. So meet the work items. Um, if I go into my meta in folder here, I have two files which you need. Um, this one actually just points to my definitions. I'm just going in here now. Um, here you see, okay, just remove this one. So I have already two work items in here. Um, Actually, I'll make sure that this... 
sorry, just one second. Here we go. Okay. So you see down here I have so-called custom tasks or work items, I will call them. Um, now you can create those uh, very specific tasks your, yourself by going into this file I already showed you. So here we have the email and the log work item. And I can just go on and already had that from rehearsal in here, so sorry for that. So you can create a new one, just popping in um, a name here. Uh, the name is important, so I think it's a bit self-explaining. So you have a name on your work item, you have undefined parameters which you can add to that work item, a uh, display name which really doesn't matter, and you can, for example, also define an icon which is then shown um, in your um, on the palette then. So I'm going to save this one with a new webinar item in here. I'm going to close the file and I'm closing the webinar process as well. I have to reopen it so that it reads the width file. Um, width stands for work item definition by the way. So just that you know I'm not inventing any words here. Um, and here the webinar item shows up. Now I can go and drag it in here. I can connect those again and have defined an own kind of task. Now, obviously this task doesn't do anything, so I'm just going to close this one and go to a prepared example I have here. And that's the simple process. So you see, this is really more or less the same as before. I just didn't take the webinar item. I'm using this log item here, which I put in here. Um, if I go back into my width file, uh, this is the work item I added there. And you see I defined a parameter called whatever, which is of type string. So if I go back in here and I have a look at the I.O. parameters of this work item, you see I've added this here. And I have uh, assigned a value to it. Hello webinar, I'm a log. Okay. And uh, this is really all there is to the processing, process modeling. So I created a process, I added a work item, and again this had has yet nothing to do with Magnolia. This is JBPM and BP, BPNM too specific. Um, now, as I said, you haven't really, this one doesn't do anything, so what you do with a work item, you create a handler for it. And I'm just going to switch into my uh, ID of choice, and I'm going this is the same module I have open here, so you see the resources, I have the same process here, and I go into my Java package, and I have a look at this file here. So this is called Log Work Item Handler, and pretty obviously what it does is it handles the log work item I created inside of Eclipse before. And you create such a work item handler by simply implementing the interface. Uh, most important is here the execute work item. So when I go back into my handler here, uh, you also see more or less what I'm doing. Uh, the execute work item gets the work item passed into itself, and from the work item I can go and get parameters. So the parameter I defined inside of the work item called whatever. I read its value and pass it into the parameter field here and I then go and log it to the console. And that's really what all it does. Um, what you also want to do here is you get the manager and you go and complete the work item using the manager and this will tell the process to proceed. If you don't do that it will be stuck at that uh, work item in the process. And this one tells uh, the process to, okay, I've logged 
what I wanted. Now I just proceed inside the process and move on to the next work item. Okay, so I think we have more or less everything together. Uh, we have a process, we have a custom work item, we have its handler. Now what we don't have is we haven't told uh, Magnolia anything about all this. Um, so I'll show you how you do that when I go back in here. So here I'm in the configuration tree of Magnolia. Um, the module I was poking around with is called My Workflow. So here we have the module configuration. You see I have two important nodes at this moment. That's the workflows node uh, and the work item handlers node. Let's have a look what is in here. So let's open this one. So here you see uh, this is the simple process inside of my resources folder uh, which I added to my workflows registry. So if you have your own um, module and you add the workflows nodes underneath, everything you add here will automatically be loaded into the JBPM engine of Magnolia. So here you see this ID which is used JBPM internally. Um, inside of Magnolia we don't use this one, we use the node name. So keep this webinar node name in mind. So this is our webinar process and I'll just close this one and I go into the work item handlers and here you see those two work items you saw in the bid file already and then as I said the work item name is important and that's the name in the bid file and this maps directly to the node name underneath your work item handlers registry. And here you define your implementation class, so the log work item handler I showed you before with those few lines of code. And now, now everything is in place, so I have told Magnolia about the process, I've told them how to handle that custom work item we created. So next thing to do is just launching that process. Now you usually don't want to do this uh, in production uh, using the Groovy console, of course, but um, for this use case, I will just launch it from out here, from inside here, and I do that by getting the workflow manager from our components, and using that workflow manager, I just go ahead and launch the webinar process, and I pass an empty hash map to it. And what you should be expecting is, of course, something, so see, I clicked here three times just to make sure, uh, which means I launched the process three times. And if I now go into my console, here we go. So we have three of those log messages, which means it went through here three times, which means we launched this process three times. Okay. <clears throat> now, think of this log work item as a kind of a service task, so there was no human interaction needed here. And I prepared another example called simple human task process. And here you see it is very similar to the last one. I reuse the same log work item which is some sort of service. And the only thing I changed here is I changed the log message. So log before the human task is launched. And I added this human task I did that just by going in here, selecting this and dropping it into the arrow. I'm not going to do that again. I opened it, I gave, uh, changed the name of it. Again, this is just the display name, 
it's really not important. The important part is this here, the task name. Um, so I call this workflow copyright and that's more or less all I had to do. So uh, if I now go back into Magnolia, here we are. Uh, let's have a little look at the configuration of this example. So I did not add any new work item handlers. However, I have this one here. So you remember, uh, remember the task name I gave it, workflow copyright. That name maps directly to a task definition. So if you compare this with the task sample module, the copyright check, um, it's very similar. I'm even reusing the, the task view or message view from the task sample module here. I've added a parameter resolver class. Um, so if you think back to the task example, the copyright check example, I was creating the task inside of the action. Now in this example I want the, the workflow to create that task for me. So, and there is no action involved. So what I do, I, I configure this parameter resolver and it does exactly what it says. It resolves parameter from the process and adds them to the tasks content map. And that's really all there is to it. So if I now go back into the Groovy console, I'm able to, um, I was prepared a little snippet for this one. So you see it's very similar. I'll go and get the workflow manager and I launch the webinar human task. Well, actually, I forgot to show you that one. It's, uh, nothing matching to it. <clears throat> so we launched the webinar process before. That's a simple process. And I have predefined this one, the webinar human task, which is, uh, of course, a simple human task process registered here. So if I now go back to the Groovy console, you see here I have launching this human task webinar process. I'm not putting in an uh, empty map, I'm actually passing a parameter this time called path and a hard-coded value. And now I'm gonna do the same as before, I'm gonna launch this three times. And what I'm expecting now is again I want a log message in my console, so I click three times and it went through the log work item and it should have created three tasks now. So it went through here three times. And now I'm going back into Magnolia and have a look at my pulse. And here we go. We just created a task out of the workflow. I'm going to do the same here. <clears throat> the thing here, um, when you work with task inside of a process, um, you don't want it to run through and just finish. So at this moment, we have three processes which are stuck inside here. And you make them, uh, as soon as you approve, it internally resolves the task, and as soon as you resolve the task, the process will proceed with its execution. So out of those um, three processes, now two are completed and we have one which is stuck. And I will just leave it there. So to summarize, um, <clears throat> You start with your own module, so you never start off by doing changes in Magnolia's workflow modules. Um, and uh, well, yeah, obviously I would use the Magnolia's archetypes which we have for this. 
And then when it comes to process modeling, uh, I would just suggest starting with the BPN2 modeler from plugin for Eclipse. And you, I would start simple, so you create something similar like I did here. And from there on you advance. Uh, and in the end it's really just uh, learning by doing. So you can try all that stuff in the palette on the right side and see how it goes. Um, I also, um, well, I mean, uh, well, I'm just telling you use work item handlers. Um, they're very, very easy to create, as you've seen. They're well, uh, also easy to maintain. And, uh, well, just because it's a very simple class, it's all, also very easy to do unit tests on them. And, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Uh, thank you for listening, and I'm more or less ready for questions. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Espen. Um, so, yeah, we're ready for answering a few questions now. Um, feel free to send them through using the, the, uh, the questions and submission parts of the GoToWebinar that you see there. Um, we have a first few questions here for you, Espen. So, the first one... Um, you said earlier that you should think task first, and this is something quite new to Magnolia, or certainly you know, as of Magnolia 5. So you said task first, but the question is, at what point do I need a workflow, i.e., for example, what are tasks not capable of? Um, well, as you've seen, um, the workflow is is also using tasks. Um, the question is more about when do you want to use a, um, a process or a workflow to solve your problem. And I think, um, well, you do that as soon as it gets really complicated. So when you have a really complex logic, how you call a class and how you create your your task and set pulse, and if you have more than, let's say, one people involved, I would say, well, go with workflow. So. If you can solve it simple, do, do it the task way. If you have more than three people involved or whatever, use workflow. Okay, thank you. Um, next question. You Earlier on, you used the Groovy console to launch the process, but um, what, are the, or what are the other possibilities? Um, so, you can launch the process from everywhere in your code. Um, what we do with the publication workflow is we have uh, so-called commands inside of the command chain where you can uh, even uh, configure which kind of process you want to launch and so on. Um, the big plus if you use the command chain for launching your processes is that you can easily launch them from an action. So let's say inside the action bar. and you can use the same mechanism and the same commands to launch a process using, for example, the REST API. Okay, thank you. Next question. Um, you showed an example earlier of a very complex process workflow. Um, do you have any available workflow templates that can be downloaded or accessed and, and customized? Um, so, all the samples I used uh, in this webinar are available on Git, for example. So, uh, if you look here at the bottom of the resources, uh, it's currently on a branch called Webinar, but they're accessible. Um, otherwise, JBPM has some of, uh, well, it's a bit hard to find material when it comes to JBPM, but they use, they have this Git project where they add test cases. And they also have uh, examples of uh, process definitions, which you can uh, start off with. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, good point about links to resources. We'll uh, follow up by email with everyone with all of these links, plus other useful links to, uh, to do um, various documentation and um, tutorials, which are available to help you uh, create your workflows. And... I think, uh, like you say, simplicity is, is really the, the best approach in, in most cases. Even some of Magnolia's largest uh, customers and implementers, um, often they will go with 
um, a very simple publication, instant publication uh, task rather than approaching it with a complex workflow. Sometimes speed suits um, users better than complexity. However, yeah, uh, other examples could be complex uh, processes required for uh, legal reasons. So in the banking industry, the insurance, healthcare also, they do have very strict legal publication requirements. So again, we know of cases where there are complex uh, processes there. Okay, if there are no final questions, I think we can bring this webinar to an end. So uh, thanks to everyone for attending. We hope it was useful for you. We'll follow up very soon by email. And thanks to Espen for the, uh, the great presentation. Okay, thank you and goodbye.